In this lecture video, we are going to talk about a few more concepts on associations and links. So let's start with the first concept that is ordering. Often the objects of the many side, the objects on the many side of the association, uh, they usually do not have an explicit order. I'm talking about one to many or many to many associations. So when you have a one to many association, there is a side of the association with the numbering one and the other side has the many. If you have many to many, then you have both sides of uh, having the numbering or multiplicity of many. So often the objects on the many side of an association do not have an explicit order. You can regard, uh, regard them as a set. But sometimes the objects have an explicit order. For example, in the diagram shown here on the right of the screen, you can see a workstation screen containing a number of overlapping windows. Each window on the screen occurs at most once and the windows do have an explicit order, probably the order in which you have opened them or rearranged them. So only the topmost window is visible to you at any point in the screen. The ordering is an inherent part of this association and you can indicate an ordered set of objects by writing ordered within the flower brackets next to the appropriate association end. So if you take a look at this diagram, you have a screen class and a window class. A screen can have multiple windows or multiple windows can be visible on a screen. So on the many side, you can see if you open a screen and you open multiple tabs or multiple windows, they are listed in the order in which they are open. And at any given time, only the topmost window is available or visible on the screen. So on the many side of the association, you have to just use the keyword ordered within flower brackets. So this is about ordering, especially when you have one to many associations and you have to order the objects of the on the many side of the association. Let's take a look at the next two concepts that is bags and sequences. Ordinarily, a binary association has at most one link for a pair of objects. However, you can permit multiple links for a pair of objects by annotating an association end with bag or sequence. A bag is a collection of elements with duplicates allowed. A sequence is an ordered collection of elements with duplicates allowed. So if you look at the figure here again, uh, you can see an itinerary depicted here, which is a sequence of airports. And the same airport can definitely be visited more than once. Like the ordered indication, bags and sequences also are permitted only for binary associations. And then you can see how they are uh, denoted here. That is, if it's a bag, you put the keyword bag on the appropriate end of the association. If it's a sequence, you put the keyword sequence on the appropriate end of association. The only difference between bag and sequence is that you have bag as a collection of elements with duplicates allowed. But when it's a sequence, uh, it's always an order collection of elements with duplicates allowed. Let's move on to the next concept called as association classes. Just as you can describe the objects of a class with attributes, you can also describe the links of an association with attributes. The UML represents such information with an association class. So what is an association class? An association class is an association that is also a class. Like the links of an association, the instances of an association class will derive identity from the instances of the constituent classes. So if you look at uh, this diagram here, you have two classes here, file and user. You have uh, association between them. And let me read it for you. File has multiple uses. When you read it this way, you omit the immediate uh, multiplicity notation, only read the association at the other end. So file has multiple uses. If I read it from this way, a user can access multiple class. So the association here is accessible by. 
But since this association has attributes and operations associated with it, this can be made or denoted as an association class rather than just an association. So the UML notation for the association classes, you have a class box as usual, but this time you have to connect it to the association by means of a dashed line. All right. So you have file accessible by user or user can access multiple files. So what is the attribute here is an access permission. Since this attribute is associated with this association, that is why instead of writing it as a mere association, it is represented as an association class. Let's take a few examples here. These are the objects created for the file class. These are the objects created by the user. So you for the user class, you can see the different objects created for the accessible by association class. So John Doe may have only read permission for this file. Mary Brown may have read write permission for this file. John Doe may have read write permission for this file. So since this association class has attribute access permission, which can take multiple values, read, write, and uh, so on. So it is represented by an association class rather than simply by an association. Let's take a look at more uh, examples of this kind of a class. Let's take a look at the person and the company class. So here you can see the person class is associated with company. We already know this. And previously, we have uh, denoted the works for as an association. This time, we are going to uh, denote the works for as an association class with two attributes, salary and job title. So salary and job title are associated with works for rather than being associated or attached to the person class or the company class. That is why these attributes are folded into the association class rather than with uh, a class which is being connected to another class. So you can see person uh, can work for a company or cannot, if the person is not working, then works for will be with zero company. A company, on the other hand, can employ multiple people. So you can see these are the attributes of the person object. These are the attributes of the company objects. And these are the attributes of the works for association class. So here you can see and there is a self-reference. The same person can take two roles. That is, a person can be a boss uh, managing multiple workers. And a person could also be a worker reporting to a boss. So here also you can see this is a self-association to the same class from the same class. Here also there is an association class. It's an anonymous association class with no name, but has one attribute called as uh, performance rating. The wrong way of depicting this would be by folding these two attributes back to the person class or the class on the many side of the association. This is the wrong way of representing it. Actually, it should be represented. This is the preferred form of representing by attaching uh, the attributes of the association inside the association class. This way was the original way or the old way of doing it, where we wrote an association and these attributes were enveloped or folded within the class on the many side of the association. Let's take a look at uh, more examples where you have an association class participating in an association. So let's take a look at this. You have the user and the workstation. These are two different classes. So you have the user class. Let me read it. User is authorized to one user can use multiple workstations. Yes, we can use uh, multiple workstations at our workplace or at home. And if you read it this way, a workstation can have multiple users using it. So at a workplace, one workstation may be used by n number of uh, employees. So even though they use the workstation, they may have different access rights and privileges. So one may be an admin, one may be an employer, one may be an attender, one may be a clerk, one may be a secretary, and so on. All of them may be using the same workstation. But based on their different profiles, they may have different access rights. So this authorization is an association class with multiple attributes and one operation defined. You can see this is actually an association class, but you can see how this is taking part in an association with another class. So authorization and directory is a class, not an association class. So you can see here, if you read this authorization, authorization is applicable to a directory, which is, say, the home directory here. This is an association end name. If you read it from this side, you can see that a directory may have different authorizations 
uh, for different users, multiple authorization profiles, set up. So this is an example of how association classes themselves can take part or participate in associations. Let's take a look at the difference between an association class and an ordinary class. So you can see this is these are two classes and there is an association class here. Right. So a person can own stock with multiple companies. A company can sell its stock to multiple people. So what is the difference between an association class and ordinary class? So if you have a purchase, you can see this is not represented by an association class, but rather than an ordinary class with multiple two lines of association. The difference between an association class and representing a connection using a class itself rather than an association class is that association class will have only one instance. That is one time a person owns stock. It is one instance or one occurrence, I must say. Whereas a person can make multiple purchases with the company. So when you have multiple occurrences of a relationship, you always depict them using a class rather than an association class. So this is about association class concepts.